Hello, I'm Bill Phillips, and I'm here in Murcia in southern Spain at the end of a six-week period of training practitioners, coaches, and more recently, trainers of neuro-linguistic programming. I had the very rare privilege of having a long conversation with my friends and mentors, John Grinder and Carmen Bostick Sinclair, about the application of precision in language, in particular the meta model, and their development from the meta model, what's called the verbal package, which is used in new code in neurolinguistic programming. Here are some excerpts from that discussion. I hope you'll find them both interesting and informative. My intention, really, for speaking to both of you is that we've been here in southern Spain training coaches. We're now training trainers of NLP. And repeatedly each year, one of the things that I notice in many of the people in the program is that um, the use of language, especially spotting their own use of language, seems to be quite low. Um, and I'm just wondering what two of you think about that, particularly using the meta model and, and your development of the package. Well, for me, I, I don't understand whether or not it's a cultural difference with some people and certain words that they use, but it seems that some people have the propensity to use a lot of modal operators and universal quantifiers. And I try to have them monitor their own speech and then become cognizant of the speech of other people. And I think this is important because it, to me, is a verification of limitation of maps. Yeah, I noticed similar things. Um, the real interesting question is, so how do you make a appropriate intervention to get them moving in the direction of being capable of hearing what they say themselves? And there are several ways I can think of. Uh, let's contrast a silly and an impossible solution. A really silly solution would be to rehearse everything you say before it comes external. Oh, that's so just so planned. Isn't isn't language sort of like a spontaneous um, development from the unconscious? Let me think about that. <laughs> <laughs> it demonstrated, of course, the pattern he was just talking about. I uh, I would be loath to recommend to anyone they do rehearsal. What happens? The natural rhythms are gone, the fluidity is gone, the spontaneity is gone. Um, it would be horrible. I've actually seen people paralyzed when they learn the meta model. Um, they can't speak without making a meta model violation. I think I just made several of this thing. <laughs> so that's not the point. The, the, the meta model is applicable in certain contexts. I agree with Carmen that if you develop the ability to monitor your own speech and identify naturally um, the use of language, and in particular if you're interested in reforming your thinking by making the assumption, which is fairly good, um, that speech patterns reflect the thinking patterns. So to use Carmen's example, if there's a preponderance of normal operators of possibility and necessity, this is a statement about the narrowness of the, the territory being scanned, incorporated, mapped onto the internal representations of the person involved. Uh, this is a limit of the thinking, this is a limit that shows up in the form of our operators. The importance um, of the process that Bill has done on his um, CDs, CDs um, is that when I first learned the meta model, hundred years ago at least, um, I was taught in a very rote way. First you did these and you had to memorize and somebody said, oh, you put this one on this finger and that one on this finger. And I was so confused and it was something that I just took and put away. And it wasn't until I started working with clients specifically that I went, yeah, I think I'm going to go back and look at that meta model again. And that's where I found a lot of the gold of the work that you had done and what you had developed. May I remind you 
when you ran into the Metal Model 100 years ago, <laughs> that there was one other thing you did. You took it, and you put it at the moment, at the time, you were the chief executive officer of a holding company with 27 subsidiaries. This implies the superb use of self-directed teams, which you are, in my opinion, the expert about. And you went in there and tested it in that environment to begin with. The, until you saw clients, it's true, wasn't part of your performance until you began to see clients. But you had already taken it into another context of application. Well, I had to demonstrate your own satisfaction. Well, I had taken, I had taken the, a form of the verbal package that I had developed for myself to utilize within my executive teams and throughout the companies that I had worked with. And because I was finding that I was getting these horrible, horrific, long reports, um, and I didn't have the time with 27 companies to go through all of these reports to get a thumbnail sketch of what was going on weekly in the companies. And I would go visit once a week. I would look, see, feel, smell, get an idea for what was going on. However, I wanted to have some information as well. And so we started to develop this executive report where they had to write their intention. They had to frame what it is they wanted to discuss with me and specifically, what specifically and how specifically. And then when John looked at the, the form that I did, he added the paraphrase. And but that's when I started using that. Where I was going with the other patterns in the meta, in the meta model, that, that there were all the other ones: the cause of fact, the um, my reading uh, complex, my reading complex equivalent, all of those. Um, I just put those aside. So those are the ones I was referring to that I didn't use specifically and, until um, I was with clients. And then when I started training, I then when, oh my, I'm not going to train the minimal the way I've always trained. And I think on Bill's CD, he has sort of utilized the pattern that I instituted when I first started training an inductive methodology for being able to not only um, use the meta model um, intervention, but to hear them as well, not only in yourself, but in other people. Because what I found was, if you just memorize the list and you memorize your responses, you have to be able to hear them. So on this CD that Bill um, has presented and that I hope you will buy, he goes through this process and he has made it into an excellent um, teaching tool. Well, I think, you know, that, that inductive way of working where people hear a series of examples and they have to identify or recognize the pattern is exactly what people are needing to do. And, and I think that it works.